I had a Patreon subscriber ask me to critique her painting and give her suggestions on how I would have approached her painting and uh, just give her a little bit of critique on what I think of her painting. And overall, I think she did a good job. And this, if I looked at this painting, I would definitely be able to say, yep, that's the dog in the reference photo. So that's great. Um, one thing that I would say, especially for beginners, if your drawing skills aren't strong, if you're doing a commission for somebody, I would say go ahead and transfer your image using a light box um, to get your image from the reference photo to your painting surface. Uh, don't mess with trying to get the drawing right. First of all, it's going to take you a long time to do that. And second of all, it's going to be wonky if your drawing skills aren't really, really strong. And definitely keep working on your drawing skills. And even when you transfer a painting uh, using um, what some might call tracing, we artists call it transferring, <laughs> um, you're still going to have to do a ton of drawing once you get that transferred because especially after you get that first layer down you're not going to be, be able to see your original transfer so you're not cheating uh, uh, all the photorealistic painters do uh trans some form of transferring even the some of the old masters use it used similar transfer techniques just to get a super realistic look so that is something that professional artists use commonly and I would encourage you if you're doing a commission for somebody like this Patreon subscriber was, go ahead and use the transfer um, process. And there are tons of videos online how to do it and uh, there's lots of information out there. There's several different ways to do it. So it's just a great time saver and your painting will look more realistic. So um, that's my first tip. That's my first um, impression of this painting is a uh, transfer would have helped. Um, and then the other thing is what makes the reference photo so beautiful? It's that gorgeous light that makes the dog glow. It's like he has a halo of white around the outer edges of his body and his face. And some of those white areas in his, uh, like his eyebrows. I love those beautiful curved pieces of fur coming over his right eye or left. That's just lovely. And you want to make sure that that is a huge highlight of a painting like this, because that's what makes, makes the reference photo so special is this beautiful light. And in, um, the final painting, I think it looks kind of like an afterthought. Um, and, uh, it might just be a question of, I don't know how to save those whites. So I have tons of videos on how to do that using masking. Um, that would be, especially if you're starting out and you're not comfortable with doing a bunch of complicated um, negative painting, uh, you definitely want to use masking and you would just mask out those curves. And make sure you get those beautiful curves in there that's in the fur. And there's big chunks of fur. It's not single pieces of hair. Uh, like in the painting, she's got single pieces of hair uh, painted. But if you look at the reference photo, it's actually like eight or nine big chunks of fur that look like one shape, almost a crescent moon shape coming out over that eye. So create those shapes with your masking fluid. And also there is a lot of white on the top of the dog's head, um, in his ears and along his back. And the way that this artist uh, approached this painting was to make the background really light and make the white areas in the reference photo uh, kind of gray purples. I love the the beautiful grays and blues she got in this dog's coat. They are very pretty and they uh, are a great interpretation of 
the shadow areas in the dog because he does have a lot of shadow areas down beneath, especially where the light isn't hitting. And I really like her color palette for this painting. It's just absolutely gorgeous. Those um, burnt sienna hues with the purples and the, and the maybe ultramarine blues she might have used and the blacks. Those work very beautifully together, and I like how she picked that palette, and that's not easy to do. For me, it's a huge challenge when I'm painting shadows in a white furred animal. It's like, what do I do? Because sometimes the, the shadows look kind of orange, but they also look purple or pink all at the same time, and I like the colors she chose for the shadows of this painting, so that looks really good. Um, um, that being said, what I would do again is I would have masked out the white areas around the top of the dog. And um, for some of the bigger white areas, you don't even really need masking. And I would have kept that white and made the background dark like it is in the reference photo and just kept with the color scheme that the reference photo already worked out for you. There's enough problems to work out in this painting um, that if the reference photo always already gives you the answer, just go with that. And the reference photo beautifully shows um, you if you will just repeat what the reference photo says uh, as far as keep those whites white and the darks dark. And the dog's face is unfortunately in a lot of shadow, so that's where I would say you do need to get a little bit creative with this picture. And... Um, because it's all really dark and it's hard to see the details. And I like how she um, almost, she had to use a lot of imagination actually to get the eyes and they look really good compared to the reference photo, which she didn't have much information to work from. So good job on that. And um, they look good for the, <laughs> the information the, this picture provided to you. So um, those are the main suggest suggestions that I can think of. I like the liveliness in the fur, um, especially in the chest area. That's just really pretty little area in there. It looks like you used white gouache for the white areas. And as you can see, that's just not going to give you a crisp, white, beautiful, shining um, area of white. Uh, not as much as using masking or, uh, if you're brave, negative painting. And the dog's eyebrows on both eyes have white areas, and um, that is missing in the painting. And the top of the dog and the back of the dog have glowing white areas, and that's not in the painting. It, 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 there's no way to do it unless you make the background dark. So those are my uh, few suggestions, suggest, suggestions that I would have to uh, improve this painting. Overall, I would say you did a good job, and I'm sure the owners of the dog will be happy with what you created. It certainly is their dog, and he sure is a cutie pie, isn't he? And look at those ears. They're just adorable. So um, thank you so much for giving this dog to me to critique, and uh, sometimes it uh, <laughs> takes a little bit of bravery to do that, but um, I do appreciate it, and um if you have a painting that you would like me to critique, I do that for my Patreon subscribers. So just join me over at Patreon and you can subscribe and I um, offer my Patreon subscribers a critique a month. So I would love to do that for you. Okay, thanks so much. You guys have a good weekend. It's Friday on my end and I intend to enjoy it. Okay, take care you guys. Bye.